What is working for small business right now? What is not? They're finding their optimism note. Rainbows follow storms. So um, this is almost like a Clinton, -ist, a Clinton moment in the sense that you're trying to find out this, this compassion but capitalism in the same breath. At Operation Hope, we have this one million black business initiative as an example. We created 16,000 new black businesses in a month. And 10% of those converted to Shopify long-term customers. We have 185,000 black businesses in this one million black business initiative since the pandemic in the last two years. It's unbelievable. That's 5% of all black businesses in America. They, most of them earn their income through their business. Uh, most of them are sole proprietorships. Uh, they're, of course, making less than uh, what we would view as a taxable rate, but they all want to grow to become the next Goldman Sachs or the next NASDAQ or the next CNBC. They, want, they all want to grow, so they are employing, they are actually paying their fair share. I think the optimism and the hustle of those at the bottom of the pyramid reminds me of where we were at the beginning of the 20th century, where you had these small businesses that became these large behemoth, behemoths that we show uh, today. The numbers speak for themselves. Um, pretty impressive. The, the concern I would have is that we have had a lot of liquidity, lots of money that's been sloshing around. It's allowed all kinds of things like this to happen, good things yeah. where you see people starting businesses, bad things where you see equities get overinflated in over some inflated. areas. Um, but that, that time has come to an end. No matter yeah. who you talk to, the Fed's raising rates, that liquidity picture is not going to be the case, and there's going to be a lot of fallout from that. We've seen stock prices come down. Is it much harder to start a business these days now, too? Uh, yes and no. So the SBA, which is one of our partners, uh, Guzman is a great administrator, they're showing a 124% increase in searches for people wanting to start small businesses. I think that's the Internet, actually. They're showing a 38% increase in black business startups since the pandemic. A 15% in Latino startups since the pandemic. The biggest startup of all groups are black women. So in spite of all the headwinds, we're finding rainbows after storms. People are seeing, yeah, there's a problem, there's a ch there are challenges, there's less liquidity. But you also had these corporations that have put up $56 billion of, ca of capital during the pandemic. You gotta, now you gotta qualify. Uh, that has never been available before. And those programs are mostly working. I mean, folks, if, you, if, you, if we're getting credit scores up 54 points to 100 points in the six months, we're getting the debt down, the savings up so that people in mass can qualify for this. It's, it's almost like a new era of, um, it's like the James Brown version of affirmative action. Open a door, I'll get it myself. I mean, that's, that's great news, but do you worry that companies are less philanthropic, yes. less willing to do these things yes. as they're looking to cost, cut costs everywhere? Yes. There's a whole movement that I think is wrong. For instance, in Silicon Valley, to take on a more limited view of austere, right. austere view uh, of, I, I don't think it's going to work. You cannot not care for people when you're in a caring business. Most tech companies are public-facing businesses. I think it's a short-term strategy. Uh, you go far enough to the North Pole, you end up south. Uh, I want the kind of policies in the kind of country where I'm not just ha getting your attention, but I got Joe's. I'm messing with Joe because Joe's doing working on a story. Uh, I, I no, I'm not working on a story. I'm actually. Uh, I was going to ask you something. No, no, but I, I was but, going to get some elements built but up. Joe, but Joe's the one who told me, by the way, this morning about my friend Chris Womack, who's yep. on the cover of USA Today. So Joe's concerned about these issues. Everybody, it was, I'm concerned. What I wanted to ask you about, I hate to interrupt you, was, uh, you know, why can't we do supply side answers to this economy? What, you, you want entrepreneurship. Lower interest rates are better for entrepreneurship. More jobs, more success. Uh, greasing the path for the private sector, not raising rates to raise unemployment. Are you frustrated with the Fed in this position that we're in right now? Now, I find this on the interest. This is interesting. We're actually on the opposite side of this. I know. But we'll it's get amazing. This, we'll, get, we'll get to the problem. Because inflation together. is so bad. I, I, actually, uh, I, I actually think it's good. Becky mentioned higher interest, the Fed raise rate. I actually think that was, even though it hurt me in my stock market, my stock, it, I actually think that was healthy. Why? It took the froth off an overheated market. People thought they were, were brilliant. No, they, no, you weren't brilliant. The Fed, rate, the Fed said you're not going to lose during the pandemic. They put a floor on equities. They, then they, then they, well, they, okay. the interest rates were so low, the, the, the equities not, went through the roof. And I just think that we were out of... But I'm talking about of, the real economy, John. I'm not talking about the froth in the stock market. Yeah. I'm talking about you're going to raise unemployment and you're going to raise interest rates and make it harder to, to, to borrow money and to expand your businesses and to hire people and to flourish, that's the way you deal with, with, with this? That, that's not the so, right way to deal with it. So we're not that far away. People in the hood where I grew up, uh, when, had, when, black folks have, when white folks have a headache, black folks have pneumonia. 
we're all sick, but we're used to high interest rates. We're used to not getting prime anything. Most Half of black folks in this country have a credit score below 620, which means they don't have prime credit, good or bad times. I'm trying to get them the, to a point where they do have prime credit, so they have a problem to complain about. But I think your point is right. You want, when, you, when you're ready to pivot, you do need prime access to credit. We agree on that. We're trying to create that holistic environment for You want that. as many people working as possible. You don't, uh, you yes. don't want to uh, say, okay, my job is done. I've raised the unemployment rate back to 6%. God, congratulations. That's, not, that's, that's a messed up way of, of running a I think the okay. pandemic was a manufactured crisis, and in other words, it was we didn't we didn't we didn't create the pandemic, but we had to have a manufactured response to it. So it created more deficit, it created more whatever challenges because we had to respond to it. It was a, as I said before, before we were at war with a crisis, and we had to have a manufactured response to the response, which was the Fed raising rates to right. get us back into control. I think that by the middle of this year, my view, Joe, yeah, we're going to be stabilized.